cell phones and electronic devices are silenced them. And would everyone uh, please stand for a moment of silence and pledge the flag and remember Wayne Booth's mother, Assemblyman Frank Scarcados, um, Scarcados, excuse me, Mayor Judy Kennedy, and who else? Uh, and Donnery's son in law. That's the most. Judy, uh, 
She had a, a hard fought uh, election. She came back, she won. She wasn't a quitter, she was a fighter, and Frank also was a fighter right to the very end. And uh, both their journeys, how they both ended up in Newburgh, I'll never know. But uh, we're just glad that they did show up, and uh, all their efforts were very, very well appreciated and people well remembered from now until whatever. How my mother ended up in Newburgh, I, I kind of had a hand in that, but <laughs> she took it from there. And I just want to say it's a great honor to receive this award on behalf of my mother. She really loved um, Newburgh and all of its residents, so thank you. Thank you once again. Now, legislators, if you also have anything you'd like to say, by the way, feel free. But once again, we thank Mayor Kennedy, Assembly Spartanos, for their devotion to our communities. And uh, okay, once again, their legacy is on for all of you. And uh, thank you. Thank you for coming out tonight and paying tribute to two great individuals who gave who poured their, their hearts and souls into their districts in the town of Newburgh and the city of Newburgh and uh, gave so much to their community in a bipartisan way, by the way, too. Uh, we salute them and thank you, Kevin Darian, for asking to, uh, to pay tribute to them tonight. They will long be remembered. Gene, uh, we have a few proclamations we need to present. Okay, first up is National Foster Parent Month. The County Executive, the DSS Commissioner, Darcy Miller, this year will come up. Home Finding Supervisor, Beth Van Pelt. Two fam families celebrating 25 years of service, Doris and Arnold Johnson and Maria Ernesto Masonette. And one family is retiring after 17 years of service, Tim and Ted Conklin. So Darcy, you want to take it away with that? I back here. I would also come up here. <laughs> and Debbie Basongo, who is the director of our foster parent unit at the Department of Social Services. Thank you very much for acknowledging foster parent and awareness on foster care awareness on. We it's a time for us to reflect on the commitment of our foster parents, of our child welfare workers, and some of our staff here tonight. We we'll get to meet them in a moment and our faith-based communities and our community organizations that are part of providing a stable, nurturing, and loving environment for our children. Um, bear with me for a moment as I speak about we spending the day today in Albany uh, with the health commissioners from across the state and the mental health commissioners, and we were discussing ACEs, adverse childhood experiences. That is a study that was completed that showed a scientific causal relationship between children's exposure to traumas, physical abuse, verbal abuse, sexual abuse, neglect, divorce of parents, a parent with a mental illness and or substance abuse, and how those adverse 
uh, experiences have causal relationships to physical health conditions such as heart disease, COPD, diabetes, have a relationship to mental illness and or substance abuse disorders. We've known for many years and we commit in our work to be trauma-informed and to acknowledge that those experiences shape the lives of our children. On the flip side, the resiliency of our children is incredible and the opportunity for them to recover and be well and live full lives is dependent on the adults who come into their lives, who provide them with a relationship that is about acceptance, loving, nurturing, and consistency. The foster parents that we are acknowledging tonight have dedicated their lives to these children. I would like to say that our staff at the Child Welfare Department have also dedicated their lives to these children and their families, and we thank all of you for what you have done. Our county executive is not able to be here tonight, so he asked me to extend his appreciation as well. So if we could begin by bringing up Doris and Arnold Johnson. chance to meet them. They were busy before they walked through the door. Doris and Arnold had been foster parents for 25 years. They began in 1993 and they have fostered over 100 children. They have also adopted four children. They have provided a forever home for these children and forever relationships for so many more. Children who come to them with the clothes on their back sometimes having experienced some of the traumas I just spoke about. We thank you for what you have done. And our beautiful daughter and our amazing senior caseworker, Andrea, is here to present them with flowers tonight. Parents, 
We thank her for her commitment to continue training. She gives out her phone number and is available to all of our new foster parents as a mentor and a support for those foster parents. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Darcy. And thank you, Johnson, Conklin, and Mason Act families for all you do. You know, we definitely salute your efforts. I know there's a lot of love and, and effort, and you give stable families uh, and homes to these children, and uh, it's, it's just incredible. But uh, I do have a, it's got this county exec signature on the front, and it's a proclamation of foster parent law. I'll read the first whereas, the first two whereas, the second. Whereas May, May has been designated foster parent month in Orange County, and whereas the youth of this county, state, nation, our, our, our most precious resources and hope for the future, all children deserve a caring and nurturing home so that they may reach their full potential. And whereas, or now, now therefore be resolved that I, Steve Manning, and House, not me, but Orange County Executive and L.C. Impression, the Chairman of the Legislature, do hereby proclaim May 28, 2018 as foster parent month. And who am I going to present this to, Darcy? You. <laughs> but thank you for, for what you do. And finally, we have a proclamation for Mental Health Awareness Month. Our executive Nadia Allen is she here tonight? Nadia is here, as usual. And she's going to say a few words, and I'm going to present this to you. Good evening, everyone. It's hard, it's hard to segue to this wonderful recognition. Thank you all for your good service to our community. Um, as you know, um, we're here today also to celebrate May is Mental Health Month. I think the typical part about mental illness, and I'm, it's not like a little bit of a broken record, I've been doing this work for several decades, is the fact that we tend to look at the brain as being a different organ than other parts of our body. And the reality is, when the brain malfunctions, stuff that's not good happens. The same way that when your heart malfunctions, you're going to have potentially heart conditions, blood pressure, heart attack. When your liver or your pancreas don't work, you're going to need an diabetes, you're going to need your insulin. The same thing with the brain. However, due to the stigma, due to the negativity, negativity associated with mental illness, people tend to not look for the supports that they need. And you wait too long. And risky behaviors go undetected. Risky behaviors very simple, such as excessive gambling, irresponsible, you know, drug use, sometimes addiction to sex. All of those could be symptoms. And people are drinking excessively sometimes, or they're using drugs to mask the mental health issues. So this May's Mental Health Month, which was started in 1968 by our parent agency, Mental Health America, several years ago, we want you to talk about mental health. Be open, open yourself up. For those of you that maybe experienced a mental health issue, or those of you that have a loved one, and gosh help us, all of us do, if we don't talk about it, it's going to be the closeted illness that nobody takes care of. And when we do, it already reached stage four, and sometimes it's too late. So I encourage you to please, let's talk about mental illness. The body is one integrated system. We cannot divide from the neck up to the neck down. We need to take care of the entire body as one integrated unit in order to ensure mental health for ourselves, for our loved ones, and for our community. For those of you that may not be aware, if someone is depressed, you're very isolated and insulated and lonely. It's a mental illness. And the reality is, isolation and loneliness kill more than obesity and diabetes. Think about that. So we need to rescue ourselves from this prison of silence and this culture of secret around mental illness. And let's make sure that we talk about it. Our community, our loved ones deserve nothing less from us. On that note, I'm going to pass around 
um, literature about mental health association. We provide mental health services in this community for close to 60 years. And we are the very, very proud recipient of grants from uh, this wonderful government, particularly from our Department of Mental Health. And we run the only helpline in the country, the county. This is a 1-800-832-1200 for you to call for information, for referral. If you or someone is experienced by a suicide, if you need just somebody to talk to, we have people that call us virtually on a daily basis, sometimes more than once a day, just because they're so lonely, isolated, and lost. So this line exists, thanks to all of you behind me, and all of us taxpayers, right? It exists for you, so let's make sure that we continue to utilize the needs in our billboards for the opioid crisis, some our billboards for our rape calls also. Helpline, don't forget, it's here for you. This is your line. Always call to them, okay? We're here for you. So I'm gonna pass this around and I'll have some extra in the back for those of you in the audience who'd like to take some home. And we also have some ribbons because the green ribbon is uh, uh, the color for May's Mental Health Month. Thank you so much, Chair, the legislature, and all of you behind me for supporting us on a yearly basis for this May's Mental Health Awareness Month. Thank you.
Okay, we have a few signed up for public participation, just two. Joan Terrell regarding Protect Orange County, agenda item number 21. Good evening. My name is Joan Terrell. I live in Warwick, New York. And I'm a member of Protect Orange County. And as such, I, um, it's my pleasure to deliver remarks tonight authored by Pramila Mellon, Chair of Protect Orange County. Protect Orange County is opposed to the combined heat and power project proposal for the Valley View facility. Currently, Valley View relies on electric power, which we believe is far better than transitioning to an on-site fossil fuel source. The CHP project would be using fracked gas. Fracked gas is methane, derived from Pennsylvania shale fields. It is not a cleaner source of heat and power, in fact, quite the opposite. It is the worst possible source of energy, both from a public health as well as a climate change perspective. Natural gas is methane, a potent greenhouse gas that has a 100 times more global warming impact than CO2 in a 20 year time frame. It is, as it is rather, because of our national growing dependency on frac gas, methane in the atmosphere has increased 60%. And half of that is coming from the United States, according to a recent Harvard study. Scientists believe this is due almost entirely to fracking operations to extract methane. Consumption of methane necessitates a vast network of infrastructure, which includes pipelines, as we see here in Orange County, compressor stations as well, storage fields, not to mention fracking wells that leak methane, poison communities, and contaminate aquifers at every stage of the process. While gas burns cleaner than other energy sources, the leaking methane is cooking the planet faster than scientists predicted, intensifying our climate crisis. Moreover, both the fugitive methane and the combusted methane release harmful chemicals that are no neurotoxins, carcinogens, and endocrine disruptors. In addition, Pennsylvania frac gas has exceptionally high radioactivity levels. You need only look at the health impacts already underway in Orange County from CPD to understand the egregious uh, nature of the uh, health impacts posed by this technology. The residents of Valley View already live with compromised health status and should not be exposed to these emissions, which will have an egregious effect on their already compromised health. We came before this body last year and tried to warn you and did of the imminent and dire impacts of CPD. Our resolution over a year ago calling for the DOH to conduct a health impact assessment was rejected at that time. We do thank you for your unity of purpose and, and vote for the later resolution uh, on the legal uh, corruption matters. But now we see these same health impacts Acts of which we want are now underway. We've received over 200 reports so far, and some are quite serious from Orange County residents uh, on the CPV uh, activities. Please do heed our warning this time. There are better options of power value, geothermal and solar, clean sources of heat and power that are extremely viable for the value site. And we do, and Pramilarin specifically urges you to reject this proposal. There are nice survey grants for both these alternative clean sources of energy, and we'd be happy to help develop an alternative plan in concert with you. Climate scientists warn that the last thing we should be doing is burning more fossil fuels. In 2012, Stanford scientist Mark Jacobson developed the Jacobson Plan for New York State that called for complete electrification of all energy groups. So please, we do hope that you will not go in the opposite direction and that you will not approve the plan and look for an alternative. Thank you very much. Good evening. I'm here tonight to ask questions because when I went to the Ways and Means Committee uh, that discussed this same issue of putting some kind of plant at, our, at Valley View, um, you know, the public can't ask questions. And unfortunately, I can ask questions here, but you're already due to vote. So there's something very compromised about the way this system works. But the bottom line is, there it was last month you agreed that because of the corruption, you were going to have the federal, the state rather, governor and legislature look into possibly pulling the permits. And at the same time, like not a month later, the next thing I know, item number 29, is that you are uh, having, quote, a supplemental appropriation uh, for a combined heating and power project. But when I was at the Ways and Means Committee, 
no one was clear that, is this burning fracked gas? I mean, don't you ask those kinds of questions? And at the same time that that was going on, and then I went to the budget about it, and it seems that you're spending the 47 million that Mr. Nagastakis found when a county, two county executives and a um, budget department had no idea it existed, but now you seem to be spending that money quite, quite rapidly. Um, and I noticed on your budget that it's only coming from an interfund revenue, like there's no grants or anything that you're getting for this. At the same time that that is going on, uh, I happen to read in the paper that New Paltz, okay, it's their state university, so maybe, I don't know, maybe they're more with it in terms of what's happening to climate change and the planet, but they are getting a $1.4 million solar project, and yet Orange County at the Valley View site has 180 acres, and yet you're relegating yourself to outdated <coughs> gas infrastructure, and we don't even know because no one has asked the question, and I was not allowed to speak at that committee meeting, is that fracked gas going to Valley View? Well, let's just talk a little bit about New Paltz and their solar project. They are only paying $320,000 of the cost of a $1.4 million. Why? Because they are getting grants from this, nice third of grants. Why isn't Orange County, which in your previous facility that you occupied while this was <coughs> underwater, um, there are solar panels up there why is Valley View rushing to uh, have another gas-fired project at Valley View when possibly solar could take up the slack? Uh, I don't know, maybe some of you know. Uh, as I said, I don't understand all the science of it, but my concerns are not only about the fact that you've got gas going in there possibly, which probably already is going in there as well, but now you're adding to that with a new project, but my, my concern is also that you've got tons of money that you can spend at Valley View now. In fact, every time I turn around, um, there's another uh, thing that you're spending on because all of a sudden this $47 million showed up. Um, the last thing I'd like to say is that, um, please vote this down. And I just finished very quickly, Mr. Kresher. Yes, you do. Thank you. Okay, Majority Leader.
Commissioner Fennell, United States. Resolution of the Orange County Legislature calling upon the Governor of the State of New York, the New York State Legislature, and the New York State Office of Alcohol and Substance Abuse Services, OASAS, Office of Mental Health, OMH, and Office for People with Developmental Disabilities, OPWDD, to immediately meet with the Orange County officials and provide funds and resources to adequately address the Orange County 2018 Local Services Plan for Mental Hygiene Services. Second. Discussion? Majority Leader Fennell? Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. First and foremost, just a little bit of a history. At our caucus meeting on Monday evening, we discussed the last special health and mental health meeting, and it was the consensus of the people in attendance that we should move forward on this now. We did not seek a need to wait, and we felt that we would be in jeopardy if we did not move forward with it, given the calendar of the legislature. And I also recognize that this is the health month as well. So I wanted to thank, first of all, Darcy Miller, who was very instrumental in helping us put this resolution together, and the expertise of Antoinette, our legislative counsel, Antoinette Reed, who did a phenomenal job, along with some assistance from the county attorney. They very quickly responded to our request, and in conversations, I also want to recognize my fellow leader, Mr. Padoue, who agreed to be a sponsor on this, as well as Mr. Abrams, who would like to be a sponsor. But I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Legislator Kulasek? Who doesn't necessarily want to be a sponsor? Does everybody want to be a sponsor on this one? Everybody does? Okay. Not everybody. Okay. Okay. Any other discussion? Roll call. Anelli? Yes. Padoue? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Yes. Benton? Yes. Cheney? Yes. Fagione? Yes. Hines? Yes. Kulasek? Yes. Lujan? Aye. Menuda? Yes. O'Donnell? Yes. Ruskevich? Yes. Sasse? Yes. Sierra? Yes. Steganga? Yes. Sutherland? Yes. Tortell? Yes. Tuohy? Yes. Bureau? Yes. Freshett? Yes. 21 ayes. Thank you, legislators, for your bipartisanship on this issue, and hopefully it sends a strong message to the state of New York that this should not be tolerated. Okay, number one. Number one, B1, I'm sorry, B1. Thank you. Legislator Benton and Sutherland. Resolution amending resolution number 68 of 2018, creating a capital project for the Orange County Department of Parks, Recreation, and Conservation for county park improvements. Second. Discussion? Okay, you want to be added? Fagione added, sorry. Okay, Sierra added, Lujan added, Menuda added, Tuohy added, Steganga added, Paduk added, O'Donnell added. Does anybody doesn't want to be added? Yeah, they have added all. All, again. Okay. Make my life easy. Okay. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Pulisic? Lujan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Briskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Steganga? Sutherland? Tortell? Tuohy? Bureau? Brescia? 21 ayes. Okay, number one. Legislators Pulisic and Amo. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Planning to accept and appropriate funds from the New York State Energy Resource and Development Authority pursuant to section 99-R of the General Municipal Law and section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Bonus, I'm sorry. Benelli? Yes. Padu? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Pulisic? Lujan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Briskevich? Sassy, Sierra, Stiganga, Sutherland, Tartell, Tui, Bureau, Gresham. 21 ayes. Okay. 2A, receive and file. Number two. Legislators Kulisek, Padu, Benton, and Benelli. 
Introductory Local Law Number 3 of 2018, a local law to continue the imposition of tax under Local Law Number 13 of 2009, known as the Orange County Hotel and Motel Room Occupancy Tax Code Local Law, for an additional three years. Second. Discussion. Welcome. Benelli. Yes. Padua. Yes. Elo. Yes. Anakasakis. Benton. Cheney. Fagione. Hines. Pulisic. Lujan. Menuda, O'Donnell, Piscevich, Sassy, Sierra, Saganga, Sutherland, Tartel, Tui, Vera, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, number no three. Legislators Benton and Sutherland. Resolution authorizing the acceptance of revenue from Airbnb, Inc. and enabling the county executive to enter into such agreements as may be necessary to effectuate the acceptance of such revenue. Discussion? Yes. Move on that. Okay. Roll call. Oh, Sedega had it. Tui had it. Tartel had it. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Padu? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nagasakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Pulisic? Lujan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Griscavich? Sassy? Sierra? Saganga? Sutherland? Tartel, Tui, Bureau, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, number four. Oh, sorry, AA4 receiving file, and A4 receiving file, and four. Legislator Benton, resolution accepting and confirming the report of the apportionment of the mortgage tax for the period October 1st, 2017 through March 31st, 2018, as computed from statement filed by the county clerk. Second. Discussion. Welcome. Benelli? Yes. Padu? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Pulisic? Lujan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Riskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Sikanga? Sutherland? Tortel? Tui? Bureau? Brescia? 21 eyes. Okay, number five. Legislative Benton and O'Donnell, resolution amending and reaffirming the Orange County Investment Policy pursuant to Article 3, Section 3.02D of the Orange County Charter and Section 39 of the New York State General Municipal Law. Second. Discussion? Benelli? Yes. Padu? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Pulisic? Lujan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Riskevich? Sassy, Sierra, Saganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Vera, Brescia. 21 eyes. Number six. Legislators Benton and O'Donnell. Resolution reviewing and affirming the Orange County Debt Management Policy. Second. Discussion. Local. <coughs> Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Pulisic? Lujan? Menuda, O'Donnell, Riskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Saganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tubi, Bureau, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, number seven. Legislator Benton. Resolution authorizing the private sale and conveyance of certain county owned lands acquired by reason of a failure to redeem said lands from the tax sale to Orange County, pursuant to section 10184 of the Real Property Tax Law and Orange County amended local law number two of 2010. Okay. Discussion. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Padu? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Pulisic? Lujan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Biscavich? Sassy? Sierra? Stuganga? Sutherland? Tortel? Tui? Bureau? Brescia? 21 eyes. Okay, number eight. Legislators Benton and Padu. Resolution approving the release of the county's interest in and to a certain Detail parcel to the previous owner of record pursuant to section 5, paragraph B1 of local law number 2 of 2010. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Padu? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Pulisic? Lujan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Riskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Stiganga? Sutherland? Tortel? Tui? Vero? Brescia? 21 eyes. Number 9. Legislator Benton, resolution pursuant to real property tax law section 558 directing the cancellation of certain taxes which have been rendered unenforceable. Second. Discussion? Benelli? Yes. Padu? Yes. Amo? 
Radiostakis, Anton, Chi, Bagione, Hines, Pulsek, Luhan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Riskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Stiganga, Sutherland, Hotel, Tui, Vero, Fresh, 21 Ice. Number 10. Legislators Benelli, Benton, Hines, and Menuda. Resolution directing the Orange County Department of Public Works to prepare an application requesting the consent of the New York State Comptroller to extend funds for an increase in improvement to the facilities of the Beaver Dam Lake Protection and Rehabilitation District. Second. Discussion? Yes. All them added. And Kathy Stiganga added. Okay. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Kudu? Yes. Amo? Yes. And Agnostakis? Benton? Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Pulisic, Luhan, Renuda, O'Donnell, Muscovich, Sassy, Sierra, Stiganga, Sutherland, Totel, Tui, Vera, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, number 11. Legislators Benelli and Benton, resolution setting a date for a public hearing with respect to an increase in improvement to the facilities of Beaver Dam Lake Protection and Rehabilitation District. The Sorry. public hearing would be 22nd day of May 2018, 5 15 p.m. Second. Discussion? Well, then, uh, Kevin, you want to be added? You're not on this one. Hines added to Stiganga added. And Manuda added. Okay, roll call. Benelli? Yes. Padu? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Pulisic? Luhan? Manuda? O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Stiganga, Sutherland, Totel, Tui, Bureau, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, number 12 is a bond resolution requiring two thirds vote. Legislators Padu, Tui, Benton, and Benelli. Amending bond resolution dated May 3rd, 2018. Amending the bond resolution adopted February 7th, 2013, in relation to non highway paving at county owned facilities for the Department of Public Works. Discussion? Roll call. Benelli, Padu, yes. Amo, yes. Nagnostakis, Benton, Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Pulisic, Luhan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Stiganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Vera, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, number 13, another bond resolution, two thirds vote. Legislators Padu, Benelli, and Benton. Amending bond resolution dated May 3rd, 2018. Further amending the bond resolution adopted February 2nd, 2012, and amended February 4th, 2016, in relation to financing the cost of the construction of recreational area improvements at the county owned Heritage Trail at the estimated cost of 9128000 Second. Discussion? Uh, cool, Sierra added. Sierra added. Stiganda added. Tui added. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Padu? Yes. Amo, yep. Anagnostakis, Benton, Cheney, Bagione, Hines, Pulisic, Luhan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Stiganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, number 14. Legislators Benton and Tui. Resolution appointing members of the Orange County Airport Advisory Committee, a special committee of the Orange County Legislature. Pursuant to section 2.02Q of the Orange County Charter and Article 4, Paragraph G of the Legislative Manual. Second. Discussion? Welcome. I don't think you have to abstain. Is that what you're going to ask? Yes, I, uh, I'm on this list as nominated. I, I'll abstain from that vote, but I will vote in the affirmative for the rest of the committee members. Okay. Same for me. Same for you and same for O'Donnell. Yeah. I don't think you have to, but that's okay. You don't have to. I know you're being cautious. But Okay, O'Donnell's not going to, but you guys can if you want to. Two questions, man. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Adu? Yes. Emo? Yes. Magnostasius? Benton? Cheney? Bagione? Hines? Pulisic? Is that a yes or a? <laughs> Luhan? Aye. Menuda? Yes. O'Donnell? Briskevich? Sassy, Sierra, Stiganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Vera, Fresh, 21 eyes. Okay, number 15. Legislative School of Second Medelli. Resolution authorizing the filing of an application for state assistance from the Household in Hazardous Waste State Assistance Program 
and the signing of the Associated State Master Grant contract under the appropriate laws of New York State. Discussion? Okay. Uh, Toto, I have Paduk had it. Okay, roll call. Anelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nagasakis? Benton? Cheney? Baggione? Hines? Pulisic? Luhan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Riskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Saganga? Sutherland? Hotel? Tui? Bureau? Russia? 21 eyes. Number 16. Our resolution to please. Legislators Saganga, Sassy, Benton, and Menuda. Bond resolution dated May 3rd, 2018. Bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing the construction of capital <coughs> improvements at the Orange County Jail, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is $250,000, appropriating said amount therefore and authorizing the issuance of 250 bonds of the county to finance said appropriation. Second. Discussion. Well, has your own added? Yes, and hands in, talk. And so your own added. Okay. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Baggione? Hines? Pulisic? Luhan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Ruskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Staganga? Sutherland? Tortel? Tui? Vero? Brescia? 21 eyes. Okay, 17, another bond, two thirds. Legislators Baggione, Sassy, Benton, and Menuda. On resolution dated May 3rd, 2018. On resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing the acquisition of building equipment at the Orange County Jail, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is $150,000, appropriating said amount therefore, and authorizing the issuance of 150,000 bonds of the county to finance said appropriation. Second. Discussion. So the name you added to we added. Roll call. Anelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Emo? Yes. Nagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Peggione? Hines, Pulisic, Luhan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Saganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Bureau, Russia. 21 eyes. Okay, 18, another bond, two thirds. Legislators Fagione, Menuda, Benton, and Hines. Amending bond resolution dated May 3rd, 2018, <coughs> further amending the bond resolution adopted August 1st, 2013, and amended October 2nd, 2014, and further amended December 3rd, 2015, and March 2nd, 2017, in relation to financing the cost of the acquisition, installation, and construction of a new emergency communication system for the Department of Emergency Services and Communications at the estimated total cost of 32,430,845. Second. Discussion. Sierra added, and Southern added, and Sassy added, and Stiganga. All down, so that makes it easy on that side. All Republicans, can we do it? Okay. We should do it. Okay, good, everybody. Amo, I'm sorry. Roll call. Anelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Nagnostakis, Fenton, Chini, Faggio, Hines, Pulisic, Lupin, Menuda, O'Donnell, Muscovich, Sassy, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Tartel, Tui, Vero, Gresham. 21 eyes. And number 19. Legislator Sassy and Saganga. Resolution confirming the reappointments and appointments by the County Executive to the Orange County Fire Advisory Board pursuant to Section 18.07 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion. Uh, added, Hines added, Tui added, Sierra and Tortel and O'Donnell. Oh. Uh, yes, Luan added too. I'm sorry. Nellie? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Emo? Yes. Annette Stockis? Benton? Cheney? Baggio? Hines? Pulisic? Luhan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Ruskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Saganga? Sutherland? Tortel? Tui? Vera? Gresham? 21 eyes. Number 20. Legislators to Ganga and Sassy. Resolution <coughs> authorizing the county executive to accept a certain gift on behalf of the Orange County Sheriff's Office. Pursuant to section 215 of the county law. Second. Second. Okay. Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Pulisic? Luhan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Muscovich? Sassy? Sierra? Staganga? Sutherland? Tortel? Tui? Vera? Gresham? 21 eyes. 21. 
Legislators Denanga and Sassy, resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Emergency Services to accept grant funds from New York State Division of Homeland Security and Emergency Services pursuant to section 99-H of the General Municipal Law section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Okay, I have Fagio. Tui, Patel, Lujan, Sierra, Menuda. Okay, welcome. Yes. Yes. Banton, 
Jeannie, Fagione, Hines, Fawcett, Luhan, Minuda, O'Donnell, Biscavage, Sassy, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortell, Tui, Vero, Fresh, 21 others. 32. Legislators enact this office of Amo and Benton. Resolution making a supplemental appropriation to the 2018 county budget for the Valley View Center for Nursing Care and Rehabilitation, pursuant to section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Aye. 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 You want to be out, Kevin, Therian, I'm sorry, Mr. Ganga, and uh, Tartel, and so on. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. And Agnes Benton, Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Kulisa, Luhan, Minuda, O'Donnell, Riskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Vero, Gresham, 21 eyes. Okay, 33. Legislators Tortellus, Denanga, and Nagdasakis, and Amo. An act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedules to create Deputy Commissioner of Home Health Care Services and supervising the Count Clerk at the Orange County Department of Residential Health Care Services, pursuant to Section 2.02 I of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Padu? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nagdasakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Pulisic? Luhan, Minuda, O'Donnell, Kuskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Saganga, Sutherland, Tortell, Tui, Vero, Fresh, 21 us. Okay, number 34. Legislators Kuskevich, Saganga, O'Donnell, and then Agnesakis. An act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedules to reallocate community health outreach workers and community health outreach workers, Spanish, English speaking, at the Orange County Department of Health, pursuant to Section 2.02 I of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Paduk at it, yes. Tui at it. Luhan at it. Tocco. And Tortello at it. Tocco. Anelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Annette Nostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Pulisic? Luhan, Manuga, O'Donnell, Riskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortell, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, number 35. Legislator Sutherland, Benelli, and Luhan. Resolution authorizing the Orange County Executive on behalf of the Orange County Department of Social Services to enter into an intermunicipal agreement between the County of Orange, City of Port Jervis, and the New York State Police Departments pursuant to General Municipal Law Section 119-0. Okay, Fagio and Port Jervis, uh, that's no brainer. Adam. Okay. Thanks, Jeremy. <laughs> Still getting you added. Kevin, Harry? Okay, added as well. Roll call. Anelli? Yes. Padu? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nagnasakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagio? Hines? Pulisic? Luhan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Piscavich? Sassy? Sierra? Saganga, Sutherland, Tortell, Tui, Vero, Fresh, 21 eyes. Okay, number 36. Legislators Tortell, Sananga, Tui, and Luhan. Resolution authorizing an increase in the hourly rate of pay for two seasonal positions for the Summer Youth Employment Program at the Orange County Department of Employment and Training Administration, pursuant to Section 2.020 of the Orange County Charter. Go Discussion. Padu added. Sutherland added. Okay, roll call. Benelli? Yes. Purdue? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Pulisic? Luhan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Biscavich? Sassy? Sierra? Staganga? Sutherland? Tortell? Tui? Vero? Fresh? 21 eyes, Mr. Chairman, and the desk is clear. Okay. We we'll just have to say it's a little warm in here tonight, which uh, Antoinette told me that the air conditioner is shut off at 5 o'clock, so. Thing. So well, we got the sound system working, now we're going to work on that for night meetings. Okay? But it is good that it shuts down probably to save energy. So, you need a clock? You want a clock in here? I don't know. Go work on it. I saw Jeanette Clark fanning herself over there too, so I know she must be hot. So. Who's Bixby was that that went off? Because that happens to me every day. So you, know, you know what I'm talking about? Bixby, on, it's like a Google on your phone. Somebody's wrong. Uh, that, must be that was yours? <laughs> no. Okay, Joel, what's up? Chairman, I just wanted to acknowledge uh, Middletown Judge Steve Brockett was sitting in the audience.
just said that, but um, I just wanted to acknowledge him using the audience. So. Oh, okay. Good, thank you. Montgomery stole one of his court cards away, too. <laughs> uh, okay, first up we have Jonathan Jacobson for public participation on the New York City Council and the Fire Department. Councilman Jonathan Jacobson. I'm here to request aid for the City of Newburgh Fire Department. Because of mutual aid, the City of Newburgh Fire Department goes to fires way beyond the City of Newburgh. We're trying to avoid layoffs. 12 layoffs, which have been, uh, 12 firefighters, which have been paid mostly by federal grants. Uh, we put three more on three of those on the payroll. We hope to avoid the other nine through federal through federal grants that we're applying for. We don't know the outcome. That won't pay for it 100 percent. Just last November, the City of Newburgh Fire Department responded to the Burla Factory fire in New Windsor, where one worker died. Eight of our firefighters were injured. When we respond to fires outside the city of Newburgh, there's the cost of overtime. Sometimes there's the cost of workers' comp when people can not no longer work for certain periods. Also, you have the problem that when people are off the job, then there's additional overtime for those that are left. Now, Middletown also responds in a similar way outside the area, and I think they could probably use some help as well. But I know that the uh, reason that the city of Newburgh has, has this is that we're the only fully professional fire department in Orange County. The only one. The firefighters are paid professionals, the truck drivers, everybody. And I believe that this is a safety issue. It's not a partisan issue, it's not even a regional issue. And I know that all of you love the city of Newburgh. But even if those that do not really care about Newburgh, I think should care about the region and the responsibilities provided for safety. I've seen you act uh, in the right way concerning school violence. I've seen you act in other things where you hope that the uh, sheriff is going to cover the whole area. So I think this is another area where the county would be best equipped. It's difficult to ask individual municipalities to pay with that this, because the county is regional, it would be a way of supporting uh, this desperately needed service. I think that it's important that the City of Newburgh Fire Department is fully um, staffed, not only for the City of Newburgh, but for our neighbors. So I hope you would consider that, and uh, thank you for giving an opportunity to speak.
Thursday, we finally have an intermunicipal, intermunicipal agreement signed, and then we're going to actually go out to bid and start building the trail. So uh, I thank you for all your support. Um, you've really been terrific on the issue. So we hope to move forward. Um, I was also pleased to hear you recognize foster parents. I know um, people from even back when I worked on the papers said, when are they ever going to do a story and recognize what the foster parent program does? So um, take note. I hope maybe they will, but I'm glad you did. Uh, Lyme awareness. We had a presentation at SUNY Orange last month by a couple of specialists on ticks. And however bad you think it is, it's worse and getting worse. And I see Senator Schumer has a proposal. And what we desperately need is a really effective test for Lyme disease. That's been one of the problems. The treatment and how long it should be gets very political with the insurance companies. And you need to know that you start eliminating some of the false positives and the false negatives. So I think that's very important. Um, I wanted to mention that today, May 3rd, is World Press Freedom Day. Uh, under Article 19 of the uh, 1948 Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the General Assembly has declared this World Press Freedom Day. In the last survey, we, had, we were down somewhere about 45th in the nations of the world in press freedom. And there is nothing more important to our democracy than that robust free press, so I wanted to mention that. also wanted to mention that today would have been Pete Seeger's 99th birthday. This, this was a voice we, we really miss, and uh, over at the town crier tonight, they have an open mic night, and they're all celebrating, so uh, that would be the place to be if you could get to. Um, one, oops, sorry, I'm too close to the microphone. Uh, Saturday will be Cinco de Mayo, and uh, you know that's that's more an American Mexican holiday than in Mexico. In Mexico Independence Day and September is their main holiday, but they do recognize it, and I bring it up because you know that little ragtag, way underwhelmed Mexican army back in 1862 uh, actually won the battle in Puebla against the French army of Napoleon III, and that delayed a lot of, it really helped the North cause of the Civil War, according to most experts, but uh, it, the victory didn't last long, but it was something at the time that uh, really deserved recognition, so that's what it's about. Thank you. Okay, and I have one more? Now you last for three minutes, but if you, if you had a look. I have a lot of issues tonight. I have, I have only one more, and which is because I hate acronyms, if I can just say ACT is the Assertive Community Treatment Team. And uh, as a lot of you know, I grew up on the State Hospital grounds. I saw mental health pull apart from my brick. So I thank you for supporting that resolution and reach out to the state. Don't do it again. You did it before. Don't do it again.
temporary position for only six months. You have stemmed the tide and we're going in the other direction. Thank you so much. Thank you, Darcy, so much. It means a difference to our clients in that program that's going to get that additional staff. Uh, they have up to 114 clients served. There were sometimes only two staff on duty for 114. Now there'll be three. Some active programming can occur. That's from you guys and your pressure and our pressure. It's already making a difference. The other difference it's making, um, and I had an experience today with a client who was deserving of the ACT Team services several months ago. I spent four hours with him, uh, pretty psychotic, delusional, disoriented, thought he was part of the DEA and FBI, uh, became homeless, used of substances once in a while three months ago. When I referred him to the ACT Team, I was told we are not taking referrals. He was sent to the clinic, spent four hours today trying to work with this guy. We can't do that. We just, as a clinic, we're not set up to do that. Now that the ACT Team is taking referrals again, this man has a chance of recovery. He's going to stay out of jails. You guys and your pressure and Darcy's leadership has already made a difference. We can't thank you enough. The state, however, is a powerful beast. They are systematically in piecemeal uh, approach to the destruction of the safety net they established through community reinvestment funds on the closure of the psychiatric center. I worked with Commissioner Miller to develop all of these programs that they're trying to close now. And, and I'll give you a personal note just to show you how um, indifferent the state is sometimes to local municipalities. I was, in a, I was deputy director of clinical services, and I was in a cabinet level position at Rockland Psychiatric Center. And when it came to me to, to start these closures of these programs, I said, hey, you got some county people in both Sullivan and Orange County that are not going to take this. And the words that were said to me to an unnamed administrator, administrator said, they can, kick, they can kick and whine all they want. We're not going to listen. We're going to do what we want anyway. That's what they believe at the state level. You guys have already made a difference. You pushed back. Please keep going. Please keep back advocating. You are absolutely making a difference. Thank you very much.
So those programs are literally withering online. And those clients that are supposed to be serviced by these programs are out in the community, not getting the services that they need, and presenting a public perspective. So I hope that you will consider putting some pressure on our state, our governor, to continue to fund these programs and to fill the positions that have not been filled for the last 12 years as the attrition has happened so that we can give the services that these clients need and to keep our community safe. Thank you.
trying to speak up about services that are needed in the community, mental health services, the opioid epidemic, county level, state level, private level. There are services that are needed and continue to still be needed. Um, last week, Commissioner Miller had uh, addressed the housing crisis. I think she quoted 659 beds, a waiting list. We have two programs on the Middletown campus. One is a transitional residence and one is a soccer. They have empty beds. We're in a housing crisis. There's a waiting list and beds are empty for self-created vulnerable staffing issues. They're false staffing issues. They're done to basically close programs because they don't want them. The community, my community, my colleagues, everybody here needs those programs. Housing and, and housing the mentally ill for, for residences that have basically medication, supervised living. Again, there's a waiting list and there's empty beds where I work right now. Empty beds. It's rid ridiculous. The other thing is the promise of the Assertive Act team. Right now their census is 31. Last week Darcy had reported from the state that they would be a fully functional 48 census Act team until a decision was made about this Act team. The next day, 12 hours, I went to work and I was told that it's not going to happen and they're going to hang out at around 30. Everyone here needs to pick up the phone and call and say, were we lied to? Was it non-transparent? That is ridiculous. We were promised 48 beds. There are people in jail who are on that waiting list right now. Two people I can think of that are on the waiting list for the ACT team and are in jail right now. So our tax dollars are paying for them to be in jail. They're in the wrong service. They should be on the ACT team. But again, non-transparency. Where, where are we, why are staff telling the team, do not take admissions? Take one if there's a discharge, and there should be 48. Again, it's false created vulnerabilities. There are not staffing issues. We have staff ready to go for the ACT team and told they cannot work there. They want this program dead. It's wrong. We need these services. These are the highest, most vulnerable individuals. I've worked for the ACT team for 10 years. This is needed. It's AOT. It's court-ordered treatment. Again, they need these services, and people are falling through the cracks. Last week, we were worried about people falling through the cracks. It's happening. It's happening right now. So your resolution is going to help, and multiple phone calls. Because transparency needs to happen, and we don't have transparency, and we have secrets and backroom deals. People are getting hurt. My community is getting hurt. My patients are getting hurt, and it needs to stop. Thank you.
will die prematurely, have asthma attacks, heart attacks, etc. How many people a year will be negatively affected? And how many more will have effects 10, 15, 20 years down the line? Orange County is a science experiment waiting to happen. It's in process right now. There is documented proof of negative health impacts of gas-fired power plants, and we now have studies showing the additional effects of frack gas. As many doctors, scientists that have studied it, as the acting commissioner of health of Orange County, the negative health impacts are predictable, and if and when the, fire, the power plant is fired up full time, the negative health impacts will be measurable. So the question is, what's next? We've made major first steps. The governor has given you permission to act because he's not coming to help. There are large numbers of private citizens that are going town by town presenting resolutions for consideration. We, for the most part, have received enthusiastic reception. And there have so far been at least eight towns and villages that have passed resolutions, with I believe four more considering. One town supervisor refuses to consider this worthless, quote unquote, piece of paper, but two of the councilmen are writing their own letters to Albany. The question next is how will, how will Orange County proceed? I appreciate the opportunity today. Thank you.
these clients are taking up a space that could be used by someone who really needs it. Um, and there are others, but I ran out of time, <laughs> sorry. Um, but I do hope you will continue to support us as you've done. And if you want to hear more after, you know, I'm happy to share the differences in, in what the state can provide. Okay. And we don't have to follow the money. Is Colleen here? Okay, final speaker, Jeanette Clark. Oh, <laughs> uh, we lost the main trips. 
<laughs> he turned it around. Okay, I'll entertain a motion. Thank you for coming all night, folks. Um, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Or adjourn. <laughs>